What is Learn Outside? Learn Outside is a fascinating approach in the education field that allows students to expand their knowledge beyond the walls of the classroom. It is a metaphor for the idea that learning should be done not just within the walls of the classroom, but also outside of it. It encourages both literal and metaphorical educational attributes, such as outdoor activities, field trips, and hands-on experiences, and project-based learning. This experiential approach encourages students to explore their environment and to use it to help them understand their world better. This approach helps student agency and the gaining of a deeper understanding that they can apply in a relevant real-world situation. Welcome to podcast number 12 of Learn Outside. Mm -hmm. We're excited to be back. The description of today's episode is we have Dr. Andrew Hoyt that's going to be joining us shortly. I know, so exciting, so exciting. right? Mm -hmm. He is just a wealth of knowledge in thinking outside of the mm -hmm. box mm -hmm. in regards to education. Mm -hmm. And the exciting piece is, is that he yep. is our founding headmaster at the Portage School of Leaders, or like Excellent. we like to call the Portage School. And it Excellent. is a 912 public mm -hmm. charter here in South Bend mm -hmm. that's going to be opening in August. And we are really excited to Amazing. pick yes. his brain and mm -hmm. his thought process mm -hmm. um, about this new um, education for high school students. Yes, it's a great opportunity. And I know he brings a lot of passion to this whole district and we're excited about welcoming you into our family. Yes, absolutely. So thank you for joining Learn Outside. Learn Outside is an informal discussion about innovative uh, teaching practices and just a different way to do education that's mm -hmm. engaging mm -hmm. to our students and not just to our students, but it empowers our educators mm -hmm. to lead beyond the walls of the classroom. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now let's jump into our Learn Outside moment of the All week. Right. Dr. Nash, what's mm -hmm. your Learn Outside moment of the week? I'm very excited today. I just finished reading um, and listening to a podcast um, called Makers of the World um, by Edutopia. And this whole uh, podcast was about how everyone, no matter who you are, you're creative. Yes. You have creative creativity within you. And so I was thinking about it, and one of the pieces that I'm very proud of is our first grade team um, had several different units um, that were connected throughout the entire school year. So it made this whole theme for uh, theme umbrella, if you will, for first grade. They start out, started out by studying apples and pumpkins and going to the pumpkin patch and, and studying all the, um, the seeds and the um, uh, biological makeup of the pumpkins and apples. Mm -hmm. And then later they did a unit in the, um, about plants and studied how the growth process, the water cycle, and all of the photosynth photosynthesis. I mean, it just continued to build. Mm -hmm. So that by the um, spring semester, they were working on a hydroponic garden where they grew flowers. Oh. So this whole year they were studying, over the whole year they were studying plants, the parts of plants, the cycles around growing gardens. It was phenomenal. And um, at the end of the year, the students and teachers and the team were so excited about this whole connective process of all the content areas that they wanted to take it all to the level of entrepreneurship. And so what the students did was they created art pieces around plants. And I brought one today. Oh, um, let's see. And I just it love it here. Oh. Um, they did all the watercolors um, in the background and took time to draw. These are first graders. Again, Beautiful. Five and six year olds drawing these flowers and creating almost a 3D effect because of the glass that they used. Mm -hmm. And I just loved how the unit connected all year long and then how they connected it to art and entrepreneurship. And these were sold during the uh, spring parent conferences. Um, so I went down and bought a whole bunch of them. Um, so real quick, so mm -hmm. they, they made these, they sold them, mm -hmm. becoming entrepreneurs, yes. ha have gone through many career mm -hmm. pathways through this project. Mm -hmm. What were they using the money for that they were mm -hmm. raising through these? Um, they put the money into a fund so that they can then continue to grow their uh, garden and plant unit and wow. uh, the connections to entrepreneurship. Sustainability. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. Oh, you're welcome. That's wonderful. And that's a great nugget for mm -hmm. our educator listeners that are trying yes. to, this summer, mm -hmm. re-energizing, recharging, yes. coming up with unique mm -hmm. ideas of mm -hmm. how to lead experientially in mm -hmm. our classrooms and yes. within our school districts. And that that's was right. a great story right. Right. of experiential learning mm -hmm. that we learn outside. Mm -hmm. Yes. And like I said, it um, covered the whole year. It was connected. and came up to be this incredible entrepreneurship experience for them. So, 
It was wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I'll set this up here. Oh, oh yes, yeah, so we can see that. Yep. So with my Learn Outside of the Moment of the Week, it's really me diving into experiential learning as an individual. Mm -hmm. And I have really been interested around AI. There's mm -hmm. been so much coverage in the news that this right. is the future, this is what's going on. So mm -hmm. I wanted to dive into that. So over the past couple of months, I've been dabbling with chat, GPT, mm -hmm. uh, Otter AI. Mm -hmm. Otter AI is a tool that will record your, your meetings, your talks, and at the end, you can go back and you can ask the bot, what are the action items? What were the notes from this wow. meeting? And then share them out with your team. Anything mm -hmm. specific from that meeting, you can pull out. And so I've just been reflecting on this process of learning around AI. Mm -hmm. And then this uh, past weekend, my near and dear friend, Dr. Nora Beerlein, who is an English professor, was in town and we were, and she also has been diving into AI as she is an English professor and English mm. is an area in writing that right. is so mm -hmm. important that mm -hmm. we know the writing process. So mm -hmm. how as an English professor, do mm. you bring mm -hmm. AI in? Because we can't yeah. push AI away. It's, it's going it's, to be it's here. there. It's, it's here. here, it's here, it's, it's here. here. So how do we utilize this, mm -hmm. but utilize it responsibly? Yeah. And so she too has been diving into mm. AI because she's going to have to uh, run a lesson or a PD with her English mm -hmm. professors on AI before the start of the fall semester. Right. And just talking about, you know, we need to chunk our lessons. We mm -hmm. need to write reflections on those pieces that mm -hmm. we've learned. We need to ask AI, like, specific thoughts and then write a reflection on that mm -hmm. and in the mm -hmm. very end we have to be engaging in what our assignments are yes. so that students dive into mm -hmm. to the work so it's not ai doing the work for them Correct. so right. that they're learning that writing process right right, right. ai is a partner it's a partner mm -hmm. i'm reading this book or actually i just finished it it's called chat gpt millionaire and he refers to it as, think of that you have an assistant or an intern. AI is your mm. intern. We can so all use an intern. We can all use an intern, <laughs> right? right? So for a teacher, it could be your teaching assistant. Mm -hmm. And so everything that it kicks out, you have mm -hmm. to go through and you have to analyze it, make sure it's where you want it to mm -hmm. be. But it just makes life a little bit more efficient. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's been energizing for me to oh, kind of dive good. into that work. Very yes, good. yes, yes. Oh, very good. Yes, but guess what time it is? Oh, I know. We're going to a superhero commercial break. We'll we will be right back. See you soon. See you soon. This message has been brought to you by Robotic Summer Cleanup in the loft. That was a message from Robotic Summer Cleanup in the Loft. Now back to our program. Welcome back to Learn Outside, podcast number 12. We're so excited. We have Dr. Andrew Hoyt here with us today, the founding headmaster at the Portage School of Leaders. Welcome, Dr. Thank you. Hoyt. Yeah, it's nice great to be you. with you. Thanks mm -hmm. for having me. Yes. Thank you for being here. Yes, and thank you for letting us pick your brain here for a few minutes. And so we want to first start with You've recently taken the position here at the Portage School, mm -hmm. and what is your vision for the school, and what does that look like around experiential learning? Yeah, so at the Portage School of Leaders, we're all about connections, mm -hmm. and I know you both have heard me talk a lot about connections, mm -hmm. and the name, actually, the Portage School comes from the notion of connection, right? So South Bend was originally, the city uh -huh. was a portage site between the Kankakee and the St. Joseph River. And connections mm -hmm. are also what we're all about at the school level too. So making Excellent. connections between waterways or rivers, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. making connections in learning. Um, Excellent. So much of, of high school right now can be about, traditional high school can be about separating things, right? So separating students by class or by age level or by ability, but also separating what's going on in the classroom from what the real world is like, whether out in the mm -hmm. community Mm -hmm. or also in the students' own lives. So mm -hmm. a big part of our philosophy, and I think this is what experiential learning is, right, mm -hmm. is the notion of students feeling a sense of connectedness in their learning. Yeah. 
-hmm. that what they're doing during the school day mm -hmm. is having real experiences that they can be engaged in mm -hmm. that are a part of their experience of learning, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that the real experiences, passions, interests, connections with the community that, that, that they have, those mm -hmm. are important for their learning in high school mm -hmm. as well. So that's what we're all about. Excellent. And our, our location there is an incredible asset for us. We're right downtown in South Bend, right? So making those connections hmm. is something that we can do mm -hmm. literally, not just what we're talking about in the classroom, but we can go out and have experiences mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. community. A submersion almost. Yeah, experience. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, do, I like the word connect and mm -hmm. connectedness. And when I think of connectedness, I think of belonging. Mm -hmm. We need to have yes. a sense of belonging mm -hmm. in what mm -hmm. we're doing. Mm -hmm. And when we're connected and we feel belonging, then we are, we're open to dive deep into whatever that learning is. Yes. Right? Yeah, I think There's that's a safety right. and a welcome yeah. that's there. Yeah. A sense of relationship that draws you in too, mm -hmm. right? When you know that you belong to a community. So yes. we want our students to belong to the school community, but also to feel like they're a part of a larger community mm -hmm. that goes beyond just the school. They mm -hmm. belong there as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. No, very good. Mm -hmm. Well, that takes me to our next question. So how are you seeing experiential learning becoming a part of that, mm -hmm. as well as what would a typical day look like mm -hmm. for a student at the Portage School? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure there will be a typical day. Um, I good. like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Hopefully every, every day Every day anybody is. listening, any yeah. student. Yeah. Hear that <laughs> part? It's not typical. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think the, the experience is built around connection and a sense of belonging like you shared. So we're, we're willing and ready to change some of the grammar of just what the school day looks like mm -hmm. and just question some of those assumptions and things that we have institutionalized about mm -hmm. bells ringing every 45 minutes and where you need to go next um, yes. and think a little bit more expansively about how do we de develop belonging and experiences during this day. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we know is that every day we'll start with a morning meeting where the entire school is mm -hmm. together all in one place mm -hmm. and the students will have an opportunity to be leading those meetings pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And so we get a sense of belonging, we get a sense of what's going on here to, together mm -hmm. today, what do we need to talk about, mm -hmm. but also that's a, a place where we can do one of our key things which is give students a sense of agency, right? Mm -hmm. So give students a sense of freedom and responsibility. Turn things over to their hands as quickly as we can and say mm -hmm. the students lead the meetings and hopefully that's what's happening in the classrooms as well. We're taking a project-based learning approach mm -hmm. but hopefully taking that really to the next level where the some of the projects are coming from community members where mm. community organizations are giving us a problem or something they're trying to work on and our high school students wow are proposing what some of the solutions might be or mm -hmm. you know, what their next steps might be or here's a product that you should use that we've developed. Right. Um, and that, when you give students that sense of agency, right, that they have the ability to solve community problems, right. that communicates a really deep respect for who they are as young people, not just as members of a school, Right. but as members of the community, as of yeah. our civic society that we have, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that's going to look different yeah. almost every day, right, in terms of what project students are, are mm -hmm. working on. But those moments for kind of touch points of community are key for it as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I appreciate you sharing your turning over to the students, mm -hmm. hearing yes. their voice. Mm -hmm. We can all remember when we were young and we just so badly wanted to be heard, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And we know that research tells us that engagement comes from being heard, having a voice, having relevant, engaging mm -hmm. opportunities. And so part those community partnerships, solving real world problems, you're diving into all those pieces for student agency and engagement. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. That's amazing to have the the environment within the school be so connected, you know, outside of the school. Mm -hmm. So it's almost seamless. It, that's just amazing. And that's important for students too, right? To see that their life is connected to school, but also that school is something that can be relevant to what's happening mm -hmm. in our community and our society as well. Yes. That you know, it's not an artificial environment in some way. Correct. Mm -hmm. It it mm -hmm. is an experience that involves the outside world too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, very mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to shift to what some people might be questioning: mm -hmm. assessment, grades. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know that we've talked, and I know you're really diving into the mastery transcript, and you've been doing a lot of research and diving into that. And 
talk to us about the mastery transcript and what yeah. that's going to look like. What is the mastery mm -hmm. transcript? I know there's yeah. a small nugget of people that know, but yes. not the yeah. majority. Right. Right. Yeah, and I think it's a word that gets used in a lot of different contexts, and mm. there's a specific mm -hmm. context with right. this mastery transcript, right? So we, the Porter School of Leaders is a, a part of a group of schools across the United States that are a part of something called the Mastery Transcript Consortium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a group that is committing to developing other ways of measuring students' performance and mm -hmm. developing their academic records mm -hmm. that go beyond just seat time and grades at the end of a semester, mm -hmm. right? So this is, we're really drawing on competency-based ah, education, right? Mm -hmm. And trying to look at competencies and how do we develop a record of those competencies? And mm -hmm. I know this is something you're really yeah, into yeah, too, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You know, so we have a rough draft of what those look like and what our competencies are gonna look like. But what, what happens over the course of high school is that students demonstrate, they choose evidence that demonstrates they've made progress towards those competencies, towards mastery mm -hmm. of those competencies. Right. And we develop a record that actually has that evidence in it, embedded in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a part of what we send along to colleges at the end of the process. Excellent. So we're, we're gonna continue to mm -hmm. do a traditional transcript alongside a mastery transcript as we get started here. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, you know, but eventually, w when we finalize these competencies, we, we're not gonna finalize them until we have a chance to talk to students about the competencies. Mm -hmm. Are these what you see as the most important skills and content areas that you mm -hmm. need to know in high school? Mm -hmm. We'll talk to parents as well, right? Is yeah, this, that's right. are we all uh, in agreement that this is what's really important about our learning? Mm -hmm. And you know, down the road, we may find that that transcript is sufficient, that we don't feel that we need the grades alongside it. Mm -hmm. But as we get going, I think this is something that we wanna make sure that everybody has clear feedback on where they are mm -hmm. in their classes as well. Excellent. You know, so I think, I wonder what, what you both think, I think that mastery transcript partners really well with the sense of agency, right? Mm -hmm. That students can choose what what did you do that demonstrated this kind of quantitative reasoning? Mm -hmm. But you are also responsible for having that kind of learning during mm -hmm. your high school experience, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of freedom, there's a lot of personalization that comes mm -hmm. with that, mm -hmm. but there's also a sense of ownership of your learning. That was the word that keeps coming to my mind as you're talking, so that ownership, mm -hmm. along with having voice, yeah. that has responsibility. If this is what I'm saying, this is who I am, this is what is my best, I need to be able to reflect on that, have the ownership of that process, see where I've had challenges, and you know, reflect on you know the best parts and all of that together. It just seems like a nice whole holistic approach yeah. mm -hmm. to assessment and understanding who you are and where you are. So And I know we've done a lot of talking and around 21st century skills mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that really ties into competencies. Mm -hmm. What is it that students need to be able to do? once they leave our hands to go out for their next steps, whatever those next steps might look like. Yeah. And those are the competencies, right? Yeah. We want them to be mm -hmm. creative and problem solvers, critical thinkers. Mm -hmm. And you can just go through all the six C's. You mm -hmm. know, I'm yep. really passionate about yep. that. Um, I think we could have a, com we're gonna have you back and we're gonna have Great. another podcast yeah. Yeah. and Great. it's gonna be on yeah. Mastery Transcript I because yeah. I yeah. think yeah. the questions that are being turned right now mm -hmm. with the mastery transcript are what if I want to go to college mm -hmm. will colleges mm -hmm. take the mastery transcript yeah. yep. at the state level are they okay with the mastery transcript mm -hmm. and I know you have answers to yes, these but yeah. I have more yeah. questions yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. the answer exactly. to both is yes yeah. and yeah. people are hungry for that but some of the how still has yes. to be figured out right yes. and that's right. that's really yes. important right and to yes. be able to address some of the parental, even student concerns and worries, like, like you said, it right. does connect to where I'm going, and, but it does, it will. Yes, yeah. yes. and that's part of why we're, we're starting with a kind of you know, two-pronged approach of, mm -hmm. there'll be a lot that's familiar and traditional in the assessment yes. as we bring alongside this, mm -hmm. this, it's called a learning record, you know, so this mastery transcript oh, that goes along, alongside it. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think I would say, I know this is a lot on mastery transcript, but I, I heard this story. I visited the, the school in Ohio where the mastery transcript got, got started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll, you know, I think I may have mentioned this story to you before that there was a student who was getting guidance from his advisor as they mm -hmm. filled out the, his kind of, there's a moment where they take a break and they add things to their transcript. Mm -hmm. And that student had been in trouble that semester, had gotten mm -hmm. in trouble and had to write an essay for the dean of students about you know, why they might have been having some behaviors in the school. And the advisor encouraged the student to submit that as a part of their health and wellness credit 
and their mastery mm -hmm. transcript. Mm -hmm. So you talk yes. about a learning experience and really honoring the experiences that mm -hmm. students have outside of the classroom and saying there was learning that happened there. Oh, sure. This is a powerful tool for that. 100%. Well, and yes. experiential learning. Mm -hmm. The student yeah, that's had to reflect, right? right? Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. these experiences, just mm -hmm. so powerful. Yeah. And we're whole yeah. people. We don't just shut up our emotions or the things that are causing us to have trouble or you know, make whatever choices we're making. We're whole people. And so that well, that's a wonderful, I love that health and wellness component there. Yeah. That's who we are. I was really inspired by that yeah. story. That kind of, it clicked for me in that yeah. moment, I think. That's yeah. exciting. Mm -hmm. No, I like that story. And mm -hmm. I really love learning record. It's not, yes. grades yes. are such a negative connotation mm -hmm. and a negative experience for so many. But a learning record, this is what I learned over the course of my high school career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what right. I did. These were my experiences. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's a journey. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we have one more question okay. before we roll yes. into our commercial break. Mm -hmm. uh, question is, community partnerships. I know you're mm -hmm. about citizenship mm -hmm. and getting out and partnering. What's that going to, can you give us a glimpse of what that potentially could look like? Yeah, I think, I think we'll, there will be a few different types of community partnerships that we have. But I, I do go back to that notion of having high school students feel like they belong in the community mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that they can be a part of solutions that are, you know, to the problems that our community is facing right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And so one piece is there's a community service type element to that, Good. right? Mm -hmm. But it isn't just about going in and getting in some rote hours of community service. It's seeing that mm -hmm. you are now a part of a community where you can help serve the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. You can help Excellent. lift up people. You can accompany people. You can go be present in ways. And also your thoughts, the things that you can create, have value to this community, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We also have uh, partnerships that we're developing where students will be helping to kind of solve these puzzles that mm -hmm. folks are working on. Mm -hmm. and, and we're gonna be the first community partners. So mm -hmm. our school building that is this, gonna be this incredible brand new facility right. still has some decisions to be made about what we're gonna do uh, all the way down to, we we're just talking about what plants we should have, right? Mm -hmm. So what native that. plants should be yes. growing. Mm -hmm. And I said, pause. We've got to talk to the students about this, right? right? This is one of right. their. This is going to be one of their mm. first problems to solve. So mm. we'll put the training wheels on by by giving our problems to the students. There you go. But also, I think that gives them a sense of ownership over the building and the space and the sure. facility, which they should yeah. feel, mm -hmm. right? As well, students. how different to walk down the hall and mm -hmm. say, "We talked about those are plants we we got because yeah. of this, this, and this." I chose right. those. And right. here's why. Right. Right. Yeah. right. 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 And then what's the experience behind that? Yep. Was that a, did that choice work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right. if not, how did we mm -hmm. navigate that situation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it yeah. could be a mistake, right? Yeah. And right. Absolutely. That's okay. Yeah. We all make mistakes, yeah. Yeah. right? That's yeah. how we learn. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. We don't true. want poison ivy in the, in the planter. <laughs> 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 but you know, yeah, and really, I, th you know. I think also you will, we'll do work-based learning and other internships and things just, mm -hmm. I mean, we're really, I see this as a family resemblance to Career Academy here, that this is, this is an extension of a lot of what we already do mm -hmm. with some turn on the academic piece with this mastery transcript and also a location that allows us to be out in the community mm -hmm. in ways that um, are really distinct for that setting. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Very, excellent. Good, very good. Well, thanks for sharing. Yeah. yeah and we very will exciting. be right oh. back with our superhero guest, Dr. Andrew Hoyt. But right now we need to go to a superhero commercial. That's right. <laughs> This portion of Learn Outside has been brought to you by Career Academy Summer Jobs. Our summer job is better than yours. This message has been brought to you by Career Academy Summer Jobs. Anybody can do it. Welcome back to Learn Outside. We are once again here with Dr. Andrew Hoyt, our founding headmaster at the Porter School of Leaders. And we are into our final question, Dr. Hoyt. Okay. Share with us what's brought you to this point in your career to be the founding headmaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can believe it, this is not the first time I've helped start a high school. Mm. And I'm doing it again, so that's a yeah. good sign. <laughs> this is that's a good, a good sign. sign. A good and it's not a redo. Okay. It's, it went well the first time as well. I, I, my teaching career began in Houston, Texas. I, was mm. a, I think I was the first teacher hired, but at least I was on the founding faculty mm -hmm. at a school called Cristo Rey Jesuit College Preparatory in Houston, Texas. And that school had a work study component to it where we were sending students out into the community, oh. which was really part of what drew me to that school in the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and my wife also lived in Houston, which was a draw to, oh, right. to the area. Yeah, that, that would be a big piece. But the school's model I found so compelling. Um, and so I was there for the first four years of that school. And that's really where I 
cut my teeth as a teacher, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. understanding what community partnerships could look like. Exactly. Um, and it was, a, it was an incredible school. I moved back up to the South Bend area where I had gone to college to do a PhD, to do mm. my PhD in the sociology of education. Mm. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I studied a, a number of things, but my focus was on organizational theory and schools, so how okay. schools are organized. Mm -hmm. And that really gave me a, a fascinating insight on what I had experienced as a teacher. Ah. But I also, uh, in the midst of my PhD, I missed being in school communities. So I went back and started working in a high school in this area, uh, Lalamere School, which mm -hmm. is an independent school just outside of Laporte, about 35 miles away from South Bend. And that school was organized very differently from the school that I had been at before. Mm -hmm. Had incredible community. It's mm -hmm. a boarding school. So it has ah. a great sense of relationship rich community there. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was really found that to be an inspiring place to be. Uh, but I was so excited about this opportunity to come work at the Portage School of Leaders because this is the neighborhood where I live. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited to do the work that we've been talking about mm -hmm. and to be pushing us to reimagine what high school can look like mm -hmm. yes. and reimagine what can engage students in high mm -hmm. school and just the, the ways that we can communicate our respect and appreciation for who they are as people right now, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. the, the things they have to give to us in the future and to our communities. Mm -hmm. But I live two blocks from the Portage School of Leaders. Right. So for me, this is this, we talk about community the whole time here together. Yeah. This to me is an opportunity really to be a, a sense of belonging that I have mm -hmm. in my community and a, mm -hmm. an opportunity to be a leader in my community where mm -hmm. I live and have lived mm -hmm. for a long time. So mm -hmm. I'm so fired up about that yeah, dimension of it. Very the very beginning of my career, I was working at the Center for the Homeless in South Bend, mm -hmm. just down the road from where we are. That's the first thing I did out of college. So, mm -hmm. so I'm so excited for this kind of homecoming for myself yeah, as well. Yeah, like homecoming, your mm -hmm. neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. Cool. Well, I just recently wrapped up um, Principle 2.0 by Michael Fullen, and he, mm -hmm. in there he has a quote, and he says that... Um, you have to love what you do to lead what you do. And it has been evident yeah, yeah. that yes. you love what you do and mm -hmm. you are leading a phenomenal start to a new school. And we are so very excited to yes. have you on our team. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah, and yeah. thanks for being here today as yes. well. You bring so much. It's, it's exciting and you know, energizing for all of us. Yes. Thank you yeah. both. I really appreciate you having me. This has been really fun. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do it again about we mastery transcript. We are going to do mastery yeah. transcript. We'll, okay. we'll get yes. to it again. You're coming back. Great. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I would love yeah. that. But right. please join us next week as we have superhero guest, Mr. Brad Sagersey. Mm -hmm. And he is our middle school environmental science teacher. And he also oversees our environmental center. So experiential learning once Excellent. again. Mm -hmm. So have a wonderful Learn Outside week. Yes. And thank you again, thank Dr. You again. Hoy. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. All right. Thank you. Yeah.